So uh, some of the questions we were talking about a little bit earlier, uh, the bearings. Uh, the bearings is something that uh, will fail. Uh, what are some of the reasons why it might, might fail? Uh, lack of lubrication. Okay. Uh, you know, water getting in there and not, you know, then just sitting in there over time. It's basically, um, I mean, it doesn't need much grease, but if you let it run for a year straight, that grease is going to wear down and it'll just, water will get in there and then it'll just heat up and it'll just toast those bearings, right? So that's just one thing to check. And one thing you'll know, like one indicator is, one, you'll hear a, uh, like a high-pitched squeal come from it. And the other, you'll feel, if you like turn the blade by hand, you'll feel some uh, roughness or chunkiness because it's supposed to spin smooth. Okay. Those uh, bearings, uh, I have the tech manual here with me, page seven. Uh, are there uh, more than just the, uh, the real bearings? Well, there is brush bearings, but those rarely fail. They're, um, they're not... Um, like the the real bearings, the ones we're just talking about, they're high speed, right? Because that blade's running really fast. Whereas the brush, where the, the the brush bearings go, it's running fairly slow. So it's not putting much wear onto those bearings. Um, those are just grease. I would grease. I push out of grease every 50 hours on those. Uh, those really rarely fail. Uh, you'd put, uh, so what type of grease exactly would you use for these bearings? Wait, what are you buying retail for? Become a member and go direct to the manufacturer as low as $50 a month. Learn more below. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not going to get the coronavirus. We're practicing social distance. This is the internet. We recommend a marine grade. Marine grade? Real bearings? Yeah, just a marine grade grease. You go to any coal shop, marine shop, whatever, they should have it. Um, but you can use lithium. Um, it is okay for water. I always just recommend the marine grease just in case you have okay. a lot of water in there. Okay, so that's the the marine grease. Got it. That's that's phenomenal recommendations. The and so when you put some in there, you're just going to put a little bit in there, uh, just a little bit, a dab it in there a little bit. Yeah. So you just want like you'll need a grease gun. Okay. Um, there is two grease nipples on on each side of the machine, so just one full pump of that will last you quite a while. You don't want to overfill them. If you overfill them, it'll blow the seals out, and then you, you'll you have to get new seals and put it all back together again. So um, just keep an eye on that. And okay. So for them, they, if they haven't greased it in the year that they've had it um, and the bearings are still fine, I would just get them to put, say, five pumps into it, and that should last them a while. Okay, the five pumps. Those uh, You said they're on one on each side. Um yeah. Where are they at specifically? If uh, do you know the do you know the manual pretty well on the pictures? Uh, I do. I don't have one in front of me. Sorry, um, but I can I know the machine inside and out. So. Would it be on uh, the left side, uh, right so side? One, yeah. So if you look, there's two black plates that the real blade goes through. Um, one will be hidden under the belt cover, so you'll have to take the belt cover off, and it'll be under the bracket that the belt cover is attached to. Okay. And then the other one is right below, there's the uh, polished twister engraved end cap um, on the other side. Okay. Got the logo engraved in it. There's a nipple right below that as well. And then you can see the ones on the brush bearing that the brush runs through. Those are easy to get at. You have to just pull the tumble out to get those ones. Okay. I, uh, I'm i going to look for those and uh, and I'll definitely look for those. I appreciate that. The, um, if they haven't cleaned them, um, roughly, um, okay, so the next thing is the tumbler. You're talking about, um, if there's any issues with the tumbler, it'll start to wobble, you were saying? Well, yeah, if you, it doesn't take much. You could drop it, like, a half inch off the ground on the end cap, and that thing will, like, um, it'll almost uh, puff out. Like, it'll just compress, and then that screen will, will um just have a nice wow in it, right? So when you go to put it in, it's going to have a nice wobble to it, which will change the, the cut length because it's jumping. And um, so if that's out of round, I mean, you're going to have a real big issue with trim quality because you're going to find that you're running it through more than once. Okay, gotcha. Uh, the uh, So definitely, we'll, we'll definitely get to recommend a few tumblers. The blades. Uh, the blades is the bottom part of the bottom part of the blade, correct? 
Um, real blade. The real blade is the cutting blade on the inside. Um, and then the bed knife is the stationary blade that sits above it. That's the one you adjust. Okay, so the one that's on the stationary, that's the one we adjust. What's the space spacing you recommend? You want contact with you, the, the, the cutting blade on the inside. The, okay, so with the, uh, the I think it's number five, it's called the, uh, the blade reel. Yep. Uh, you want contact that, you want to have a contact with that, and that is with the blade reel. Uh, or the bed bar, the bed bar and the and the blade reel you want contact. So the bed bar is actually the black bar that the bed knife is attached to. Mm -hmm. so you are adjusting the bed bar, um, but the knife is what's going to be in contact. Nice. So um, and it acts like a scissor cut. So you got the bed knife which has a square edge, and then the real blade which has the the scissor edge. And with those two working together, it kind of gives you the same as like a pair of scissors. It cuts the same way. So that's why you need to have the contact. Plus, it's also self-sharpening. So you need those main contact because it keeps both blades sharp as it's working. As it's working. I notice a, uh, I notice a lot of uh, residue builds up underneath those blades. Is that normal? Uh, or do you think that uh, we're using, uh, is that normal? It is, if you're, I mean, yeah, it happens to a lot of guys, but it's usually because they use the wrong lubrication. The li wrong lubrication for the brush. Yeah, and either or, it doesn't matter. I mean, a lot of guys use PAM, which is horrible to use. Um, even vegetable oil or olive oil doesn't work the greatest. Um, I suggest, I think I suggested to you earlier about ice cold water. Ice cold water, absolutely. That'll prevent that a bit, but I would suggest also getting our clear cut, which is 100% refined hemp oil. And that would just strictly be used on the two blades, and that'll definitely reduce buildup. Uh, what was that again? Uh, it's called clear cut. Clear cut. Okay, let me go ahead and pull it up real fast, just so I can get a better uh, picture of what you're talking about. One second. TwisterTrimmer.com. TwisterTrimmer.com. So. Uh, Twister. Go into click, click product, and then right at the bottom, almost one from the bottom, it says clear cut lubricant. Tw uh, Twistertrimmer.com, correct? That's right. Okay. And then just hover over products, and I'll give you a drop down, and you'll see clear cut lubricant right near the bottom. Okay. Clear. Okay, so I'm going to go over to products you said, and clear cut uh, lubricant. Perfect. Yeah, and it'll show you, it'll just pull up and, and kind of explain what it's for. And what is that product exactly? It's 100% refined hemp oil. Oh, it's 100% refined hemp oil. Okay. Certified cosmetic grade hemp oil, they call it. And how much, um, uh, do you guys have a, con uh, okay, it's already 100% graded. How long does that normally uh, last for? In that small bottle, or do you guys, you guys have different sizes, I'm guessing? Sorry, I was losing you there for a bit. Um, you, different sizes, and how long does it? Like this bottle alone, like you get a box of six of those bottles that the picture shows. Mm -hmm. um, they're I believe seven. They're 24 ounce bottles, and I mean you're just doing like each time after you clean it. I would just give it a sp quick spray and then wipe on a nice layer. You don't want to soak it, um, and so you're not using much. That one bottle will last you quite a bit. Okay, so you would take yeah. that bottle. Okay, so I'm I use cold water for the brush, and yeah. then I would put that clean cut on what specifically? Just on the two blades. So on the the real blade and the bed knife. Okay, so I would put. How often would I spray that onto? So would the tumbler be on the machine? Yeah, you can keep the tumbler on. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so you're gonna do all this. Like basically, what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up. So say you've already cleaned it. Mm-hmm. Before you set up to run it, run product through, mm -hmm. you're going to give it a nice coat of clear cut on both blades. Just give it a, just spray it on and then wipe a nice even coat on it. And then you're good with that until you go to clean it again. The so next day or the next, uh, the night after done yeah. running. So it'll be, you'll just be doing one application after each time you, and then when you're running the product through, like before you start, you're going to soak the brush in cold water 
and then you're going to do that every five minutes while you're running the product too. You don't even need to stop feeding. I mean, you can just power through it and then just get a keep a spray bottle right next to you and just keep that brush saturated. That water, you recommend it to be distilled water or um, um, or just um, would any wa any cold water be fine sufficient? Any cold water, we I mean, obviously we recommend distilled, but I mean, any water will work as long as it's cold. Okay, so uh, you spray spray that down every five minutes. Uh, the colder, the better. So uh, uh, maybe possibly throwing up, uh, throwing a, a water cooler right next to the the guy that's sitting yeah. at the thing with some water ice. Buck device. Like I get, I use the pump sprayers, and I fill those with just fill it with ice, and fill it with water, and then that should last for quite a while, depending on what the temperature's like, or if you have a cooler that you could just it in uh, would be ideal. I mean, it doesn't have to be better ice cold, but I'm not saying shut everything down to go get, you know, refill ice water. I mean, the water will still work unless it starts to get warm water, and it's not going to do anything for you. No, so yeah. A lot, uh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, so that's all I'm saying. It's just, yeah, I mean, the water works great. I mean, I've used it. I've ran, I've ran the machine three days in a row, and I've never even had to clean the tumbler. Huh. Really, that's really interesting. Last time we had to t clean it every hour, and I'm I'm wondering if it was because we were um uh we a couple different reasons actually. We uh I was using uh uh I recommend them to use some uh um food grade uh solvent cleaner. Okay. And uh to clean it, and then after that, uh wipe uh wipe it down with alcohol, and then after that, rinse it off with water. Uh, when they were clean, cleaning that, uh, clean that, and I'm thinking uh, possibly, I don't know if it was that, but then also you're, uh, we we're using extra virgin olive oil, and 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 there would just it seemed to be a large amount of um, um, material that would always build up, and 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 I was and also the temperature in the room was kind of warm as well, so. Uh, are you recommending to have a cold room uh, for the, where, where that machine's at? If you're indoor and you're running inside, definitely. If you can get that temperature down as cold as possible, do it. I mean, the colder the better. Absolutely. So the uh, leaves just break right on off. Yeah, it, it, well, it, just, it just keeps from the resin you know, breaking down and then sticking to the machine. I mean, it really helps with that, the cooler, the cooler temperatures, for sure. Very interesting. Very interesting. Uh, you have a lot of people trim at night. Uh, I'm not a hundred. I mean, yeah, I'm sure there's guys that do trim at night. Um, it's not really a specific thing that that I ask. I mean, no one's really come out and said, "Oh, yeah, I trim at night." But I'm sure there are some people that that do, um, especially the indoor guys. The uh, okay. So then uh, let's go a little bit further. So. Uh, the 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 blades, the top filter bag. Uh, you're saying that uh, we should be able to lean on the bag. Uh, yeah, please... it's just one way of checking it. So I just say rest the weight of your arm on it. Um, but if it's blown up like a punching bag and it's like solid, then you know you got to change it because it's just clogged. Um, the new bags we have are uh, they're 40 micron and they're high full bag, so they're actually it's probably a better bag than the one you have. Okay, and that makes a big difference. Sucking all the uh, huge with difference. that alone, that alone will make a huge difference in suction. Um, but also, you got to make sure you clean out the inside of the vacuum because if you get buildup inside where the impeller is, mm -hmm. again, it's going to reduce airflow in there. And yeah, it affects the suction as well. So, I mean, I actually tell guys to take the impeller right off once in a while, just because there is buildup that gets behind that that you can't get at from leaving it on so um, I, I just tell them take it out once every you know couple of uses and give it a good clean it may take a little longer but it'll be worth it in the long run for sure we did that we cleaned that all off got all tons of gunk out it was crazy insane yeah, it built up pretty good and that's one thing we're trying to work on is just something to eliminate that um, well you know uh, sh uh, I know this might sound I don't know throw it out there but um, e two things uh, for uh, vortexing the wind uh, versus sharp corners, and I know they're rounded, but um, uh, that might work. And then, uh, yeah, softer turns, of course. Um, the 
Um, but anyways, I, I, I really like the machine. I know that, that part right there, I always, I, I look at that one part where there's that 190 and I'm, and, um, it's just, um, yeah, it, but I mean, the, the, yeah. That's one of our biggest things that we really want to get fixed and dealt with because I'll say it myself, they are really hard to clean with the vacuum. And, mm -hmm. and it, plus it just, you know, your product goes through there and, and it just thrashes it, right? Destroys it. Oh man, it destroys it. I knew, like we, oh. we've been working really hard on trying to get something to eliminate that. So just keep your eyes and ears open because there might be something. Okay. That's awesome. There was, is there any other parts on the machine that you would recommend uh, we possibly uh, fix or replace? I know that uh, we'll have to do, uh, I'm definitely going to recommend them to replace the tumblers um, and get an extra one. And then also um, check the bearings, like you're saying, uh, that other blade down below. How do you check to see how sharp it is? I mean, it's really by it's just not the easiest way to test it. I mean, if, like I said, you can see, you'll be able to kind of see if that is rounded off. If it's rounded off, you basically can't get it back once it's rounded. But if it's a little dull and not rounded, you can still dial it back into the machine and it'll bring it back to sharpness. Um, just basically run your finger off across. It's not going to, just be careful, but that's the only way you can is just kind of feel that edge and see if there's still a sharp sharp edge on it all right and then the control box uh, there's a little bit of damage to the front of the control box with the buttons and it's not and it's no longer waterproof um, what is um, you know is that a big deal um, it is, um, the machine is fully watertight so um, we do sell a two-pack of push buttons um, I think retail is 80 bucks um, but they're very easy to swap out very easy to swap out with the, they come with the new rubber gaskets um, so that's probably where it's getting in. Okay. So yeah, we can keep that in stock. We have everything in stock. Basically anything you need for the machine. How long does it take to, um, to order and ship out? Uh, I'm going to put you through to Dalton in a minute here, and he'll give you that information. Um, he'll be able to give you more prices. He'll send you over an information package, and he'll be able to give you all the shipping info and stuff like that. Okay, I um. Say that that T2 is that thing's a tank, so it will take a big beating, um, you know, and you'll still be able to get it going and and still get it up and running, no problem. Okay, that sounds awesome, man. I really appreciate all your help today. You gave a lot of phenomenal recommendations, and and uh, realistically, ideally, uh, if it was cool, we were clean this. How often would we have to clean that tumbler? Well, it, let's I say think, you're running it. You're running it for eight hours straight, uh, nonstop. If you're using the cold water correctly and you have a clean tumbler, you shouldn't have to. Hmm. That's the beauty of it. That's okay. the beauty of the cold water, right? So I'm not saying it won't happen. I mean, every type of product is different. If you're in others, and, um, you know, we can only test it on so many different strains and stuff like that. So. Um, if you're something really, really um, high resin, um, even so, the water, I always recommend no matter what, is break the machine down every four hours. And give it a clean. That's, I say break it down after four hours, take it outside, quick pressure wash, get it back in there and get running. Um, I think it's easier to clean fresh than it is if it sits for a while. Um, so you should be able to just blast it off in 10 minutes and then get it back up and running again. Okay, so uh, we don't have uh, water pressure capabilities uh, there. Um, oh, yeah. So we have to just ha hand clean it. Uh, so let's say we do it every four hours. Like I said, everything's running properly. Everything's going good. Uh, the things that you recommend us to uh, uh, to clean, there's probably, when you say a fully breakdown, you mean take the blade, uh, get an Allen wrench, take the blades off. Um, no, no. I would take the tumbler out, take the shrouds out. The shrouds oh, are... So that's the one with the, 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 the stainless piece, the one that has the latches on the um, back side of the tumbler, and then the one that it sits on top of. Um, it's got that warning decal on it. It's got the two latches uh, on the right now, so. The two, okay. So it'll be all...
Okay, yes, the latches where the where the air tube is hooked up to. Exactly, yeah, you take those two out, and that'll access the real blade, and then pull the tumbler out. I mean, you can leave it in there, but if you're cleaning by hand, you might as well take it out. Um, and then, I, honestly, I like to use Simple Green. Um, Simple Green Pro is, it works really well. You get that at any Home Depot, uh, but it's a really good cleaner. Oh, okay. So the so the food grade uh, solvent that we're using is basically Simple Green. Um, oh, okay. Are you using the? Because there's a Simple Green crystal, I think it's called, and I think that's the the, the safer one of the bunch. Yeah, where my uh, my family used to work in uh, large agriculture, they'd always use this food grade, um, you know, solvent degreaser. How does it work? Because we're always looking for new. Amazing, for amazing. What's it, what's it called? Uh, I have to get the name for you. I don't have it exactly, yeah, but yeah, I'll get, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it works phenomenal. Um, yeah, my dad, uh, my dad's, um, was, believe it or not, um, you know, if, I mean, it, whether it doesn't matter or not, when they came into agriculture, they helped build the systems and processes for, uh, uh TNA, Bayano, uh, and a few of the other large, um, solid producers in Monterey County. And when they came into town, they were, they were harvesting, uh, packing, and sending out 5,000 pounds uh, an hour. And by within 18 years, they rose that to 65,000 pounds an hour, uh, harvesting, packing, and shipping out. Really? Yes, sir. Over a course. Yeah. Uh, pretty much, yeah. It just, uh, you know, over time, you figure out that doesn't, that doesn't make sense for that to be there. That doesn't make sense for that to be there. That doesn't make sense. For, and one of those big things, like my father, when he came in, and my mother, when they came into the, uh, brought, brought, were brought onto the teams, on the harvesting and packing teams, um, uh, one of the first things he did is he went to the machines and he realized that all, all so much residue was built up that it was just ripping apart all the uh, equipment. So he he would force uh, he force mandated cleaning on all the machines on a on a daily basis, uh, which became industry standards. Um, really? Yeah, it's uh, it's like it's um, yeah the fa the family the family's definitely done a huge. Uh, you know, we go back and reflect back and realize, like, we help uh, deface this earth because with those procedures, it was uh, we're now able to harvest, package, send out product almost anywhere in the world, which allows more people to consume. You know, so it's just part of the process of industrial farming. Yeah, and then we're getting everything, you know, procedures in place. You know, we're working on the lean manufacturing type of part of it. So. I and mean, it's super effective. I can totally see why you guys are doing it because it just it works, right? Yes, sir. It really does. Yeah. So that's awesome. Um, yeah. So um, I hope I answered all your questions. Yes, sir. You did. I really appreciate everything. I know I have a, a resource to call um, if anything goes down and breaks down, and we'll definitely be getting an order placed with you guys uh, fairly soon. Awesome. Yeah. Give me a call if you have any more questions. It'll help you out with that, but I'll transfer you over to Dalton right now, and he can get you that information you need. Thank you, sir. No problem. Talk to you later, Mark. Thanks. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, bro. No big deal. No big deal. I just had a couple quick questions. I was wondering, if we place an order with you guys, how, uh, guys, how long would it take for it to, for it to be shipped out and arrive? Uh, you know what? If you, if you were to place your order today, um, right now, uh, the only reason it wouldn't go out today is just because we're past our shipping cutoff. Um, for the day, so if you were to place your order right now, it would go up first thing tomorrow morning. So literally, it's uh, it's quick turnaround, and then three to three to five day shipping, and then it arrives. Yeah, and you guys, you know what? You guys are in the same city as um, our warehouse, so I honestly wouldn't say more than two days. I would say probably the next day or two days away. Really awesome. What city is your warehouse in? Uh, it is in San Leandro. Oh, okay, cool. You guys are pretty much just uh, right around the corner. That's awesome. Okay. Yeah. I um I w really do appreciate absolutely everything. Um, I was wondering, do you think I can get some MSRP pricing on a few things? Yeah, for sure. The T uh, the T uh, the T2 tumbler. Yep. Um, are you looking for a dry tumbler or a wet tumbler? Wet tumbler. Okay, so the wet tumbler um has an MSRP of nine hundred and ninety-five dollars. Okay, and then the the dry tumbler. The dry tumbler has an MSRP of 1050 1050 And then is it, uh, I, you can use the dry tumbler on the T2? 
Yeah, correct. So yeah, the, if you were if you were to have a TQ, um, what it is is it's just a completely interchangeable tumbler. So yeah, you can just pull one out and put one back in. If you like to trim one or dry however you prefer. Does uh how how's the quality uh, difference? Have you ever seen it? You know what? There is uh, the only difference between it is if it goes dry. As you're trimming dry, um, your material is going to be a little bit more brittle, so you're going to have a little bit less of a flower to trim ratio than your wet. Um, what they say the flower if you're trimming wet, the flower to trim ratio for that is about 90 to uh, 90 to 10 percent. Whereas if you're going to be doing uh, dry, it'll be about 80 20. Um, the only difference between the dry and though is that. Um, if you're really wanting to get every little bit out of your material, um, the dry is the best because you can then use all your uh, trimmings as well for extract in the future. Uh, whereas the wet, um, it kind of just uh, turns that trim into some uh, just some bad stuff that's not really usable. So the trimming dry, and so you actually, do you actually get a larger yield with, uh, you said a larger yield with the wet or a larger yield with the dry? You uh, your flower weight is going to be higher with wet. Um, but your and your flower to trim ratio will be higher with wet, um, but um, your, your your T4 dry is a lot faster, and uh, and it's uh, it's a really 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 nice cut at the end. Gotcha. Okay, thank you on that. That's awesome. The um the next thing was how much is the blades? Um, are you speaking of the the circular um, real blade or the stationary bed knife? Both. Okay, so the bed knife, which is that stationary blade that sits on top of the of the uh, real blade, that one has a wholesale of sixty-five dollars and an MSRP of one hundred and eight dollars. Okay, perfect. And then the um, the the other mm -hmm. yeah, the real blade, which is that uh, it's the eleven blade, um, like a push lawnmower blade. Um, that guy that sits underneath that real blade, that can be four hundred dollars wholesale uh, with six hundred and seventy dollars MSRP. Gotcha. Perfect. And then the last thing was the ball bearings. So for a bearing overhaul kit, um, you're going to be looking at $115 wholesale, and it's $175. Okay. Thank you. Wait! What are you buying retail for? Become a member and go direct to the manufacturer, as low as $50 a month. Learn more below. <laughs> Don't worry, you're not going to get the coronavirus. We're practicing social distance. This is the internet.